Thanks, Junkman, from VintageRock.com. And we are uh, here backstage at the uh, at the Grand Plaza stage for the Legends concert. And uh, it's NAMM 2016, as I mentioned. I'm with uh, a, an old friend here. This is uh, the lead singer from the Buckinghams. You might remember them. I'm sure you do. This is Dennis Stefano. How you doing? Okay, man. How you doing? Good. Welcome to NAMM 2016. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's great to be here again. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, this is a great, great thing. I mean, this is everything music. Everything. It's a huge brotherhood, you know? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Glad you can make it. Uh, you got the big uh, Legends concert going on tonight? Yeah, the Legends concert tonight is great. I mean, what a great lineup they have, too. You know, Chuck Negron and yeah. Bill Champlin and just, I mean, I've been on the road with and Dennis them. Stefano. He's here, too. Yeah, I heard. I heard. I can't wait to see him. Been a while. Yeah, he's so old. I don't know how we can do it. No, but it's great because everybody here is definitely Legends. And it's, uh, the fact that we're still here and we can still do it, it's great. Now, a lot of these people, how long ago, this is, what, 1967, your big hit, kind of a drag. Describe, like, the scene, what it was like. That I know it's a long time ago, but describe what, like, 1967 for a lot of these people that may not have even lived back then was like. Yeah, when you got a hit when you got a hit record. Oh, yeah, 67 was like going, going on a, a trip because it was like everything started to happen in 67. Yep. I mean, uh, out of Chicago, the, the whole pop scene changed. Everybody all of a sudden, five, six bands charted. And then when we went on the road, there was always five or six bands headlining. Right. You know, and then there were so many bands and so much music, it's hard to believe. And now, it's like there's so much music that I think it's, it's almost unfair for a lot of the new acts. A little okay, harder no, to get mean, yourself in there now, you know? Yeah. But back then, it was wide open, and it was lovely. I mean, we, and the music evolved every six months. Something new happened. Completely. So to be involved in that on an ongoing basis on the road was unbelievable. Now, you mentioned being from Chicago, coming out to L.A. How different of a scene was it in 67 in Chicago as opposed to Los Angeles? Well, Besides the weather and the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Well, 67, 68, was, was Chicago really jumped into it pretty heavily. Yeah. And, the, and the whole scene in Old Town in Chicago became very, very of the times, you know, very trendy of uh, hippies and everybody else hanging right. out. And it was cool. But, but it was still, I think, San Francisco, New York, and L.A., were the places to be. Right. I mean, you went to New York. And London. And, uh, and London, yeah. I mean, it was just great. I mean, everybody was like in the same place. Yeah. There was like, you didn't, you, everybody finished everybody's sentences just about then, you know? It, it like, seemed to me like like the style started in, in London and then it went directly to Los Angeles and New York after that. And just, that's where all the vibe picked well, up. And it really was seated in those major cities, yeah. you know? It really was seated because... <laughs> that's an old vinyl thing, man. I used to make potato chip holders out of those. <laughs> He's holding up a Buckingham's album behind us, just so you know. So. Uh, it's, uh, it, was, it was amazing because uh, we spent a lot of time in New York and L.A. recording. Mm -hmm. And every time we came to one of the towns, we just were blown away by uh, the scene. Sure. I mean, people were open to you. You'd walk into a place you were in. You were there, you know. Right. And what was interesting in New York, if you were in the music business, uh, there was a great place there called Steve Paul's Scene. Right. Unbelievable joint. And uh, we saw everybody play there, Morrison, Hendrix, everybody jamming there. It was right. a jam place. And But you'd walk up to the front door, get out of the cab, walk up to the front door, and they'd go, oh, welcome, Buckingham's, come on in. Right. And you'd they go, knew who you were. Whoa, how the heck? But they obviously kept their eye on everything that was going on yeah. because, you know, we... When you're doing it, you don't feel like everybody knows who you are, right. you know, especially a club guy at the door, you right. know, well, but it was great. They those, did their homework. And in those days, it was like that. You'd walk into a, a restaurant or a club or someplace and they go, oh, no, no charge. You're in the business. You know, now people charge you double because you're in the business. <laughs> Songs like Kind of a Drag can do that for you, uh, man. They you know? can, yeah. That was a big hit. It was a great thing. How many millions did that sell? I sold a couple of millions. It yeah. stayed up there for about three weeks, yeah. Not the kids are dancing to it on American Bandstand. Yeah. Which, did you guys appear on American Bandstand? Oh, yeah, we're black and white. Yeah, I think I saw that, too. Black and you guys are wearing the puffy shirts. Wearing our, yeah, wearing our <laughs> outfits, yeah. yeah. That was the day, That was man. a great thing, too. It's like you could dress, you could, you could really dress up and have a good time. Yeah. I mean, you know, hair, everything. Yeah. Everything was, was open. It, it was, was all looked like, wow, that's going to be the next style. It was great, man. So. It was great. It's that kind of happening again a little bit, I think. I think that there's been a resurgence of When you look around here at the NOM convention, you see it, you go, wait a second. Everybody's still kind of in the 60s. In a lot of ways, absolutely. Lot, you know? The 60s really was the seating time, I think, for a lot of great music. It had the most depth. And it really did 
spawn a lot There's of a girl new next stuff. To us with a puffy shirt on. Yeah, how you know, about just that? Like That's I said, my old shirt. <laughs> there it is. That's where it went, right? Um, you know, bring us up to up to date to 2016. What are you doing with yourself in terms of touring and singing and things like I'm that? I'm still on the road all the time. I do uh -huh. I do classic rock shows. Okay. Uh, and I came back. I stopped singing for a while. Because as a singer, there's not much you can do on your own. You have to find your own material to do it. So I actually came back singing a, a Bobby Darin tribute show, which I do, which I'll call, I call it I Remember Darin. Boy, what a, what a performer he was. And well, and it's, and it, Always had the best band. And the best band, the best arrangements. Yeah. The songs themselves are so unique, each one in their own. Right. And so it's a, a singer's camp. I right. mean, it's the most beautiful... Uh, body of work that you can choose so I started doing that it's a big show I'm doing it in Chicago in March actually uh -huh. I've been doing that for like seven years how many piece band are you using I go from 8 to 14 depending wow. on, on who's available and how much I can afford but it's a tough thing to do well, horn sections are expensive out, man well you got to pay the guys I mean right. I, I hate asking guys to play for free it's not you know because people think and we should talk about this let's do it you know people say well could you give me a deal could you play for free and I go, does your plumber come over and fix your exactly. pipes for free? Exactly. Does I your mean, doctor work for free? Yeah. yeah, I mean, so it's an odd thing that they always think musicians. Now, we do our charity work, yeah. but I mean, but we can't drop everything for, you know, right. you know. Uh, but but it's, it's the interesting thing is that then uh, I did, uh, I got called by PBS to do uh, one of their DVDs about six years ago now, mm -hmm. five years ago. And they said, well, look, we want you to come out because you're the singer. And at the time, the, the Buckinghams have another configuration right now. Right. To, and uh, they didn't want to come do it with me. So they said, well, you're the singer. You have to be the guy doing it. So I went and did that just as the singer. And as soon as they released that, because they play that 100 times a day. Right, it's one, of the, one of the late night commercials yeah, or the compilations. The yep, yeah. yep. And uh, the phone rang, said, oh, my God, we just saw you on PBS. You're still alive and you can sing. Absolutely. Well, with that in mind, too, you're also, you told me earlier that you're the only member of the Buckinghams that's been on, on every, every single recording. Every single recording. Every track. Yeah. Every track. Every album cut, everything. Because there would be, being the singer, they couldn't find someone else to step in and do it. So I did all the stuff. So it's kind of interesting when, when, like I told you, I read that in an article that Marty did. And I went, my God, I never even thought of that. You know, the fact that we were doing all that and right. I was singing all the time. Right. Because, you know. I'll tell you. Yeah, you got a lot of friends around here. Oh, this is this great. Is Tom Duty. It's the, better than it's better than better than having a bunch of uh, enemies oh, around. I'm telling you, know? you, it's great. I, well, the music does that, though. You know? Of course, it does that. And then being on the road now is interesting because I've toured with Chuck Negron and and Bill Champlin, and we've done shows together. And we look at each other sometimes, and we go, "We're still here." And we're a lot still, of us are not. We're still but we digging are. it. Yeah, yeah exactly. but we're losing people all the time. We sure. just lost or our great friend Gary Lewizo yep. from the. American breed. It's like, you know, everybody's going there, David Bowie, and then yeah. you get, you know, Natalie. I mean, yeah, Jesus. It was a bad, it was a, it was tough, a bad, tough month bad last time. month. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, it kind of puts you in touch with mortality, you know? Yeah. So, uh, really looking forward to seeing you up here tonight with the guys and, hey man, and looking you. like you're having a good time. You oh, look great, man. We'll it's awesome. Time. We'll have so, a good time. Yeah. Again, so again, it's the Legends uh, concert here on the big uh, Grand Plaza stage. And we got uh, Stefano from, uh, from the Buckinghams. So, again, have a good time. Pleasure. Have a we'll, ball. We'll do. Knock them dead, as Thank they say. You. Break a leg, whatever you. you want to say. And uh, you know, probably heard that a million times. Hey, it's so. okay with me. I, I enjoy breaking my legs. It's <laughs> Chuckman, VintageRock.com, with Dennis Stefano from the from the Buckinghams Kyle at uh, Nam 2016. Here. When your baby don't love you, kind of a drag. See, I got to do that, man. Now I'm happy. Thank you. Right on key, brother. You got it. Okay, VintageRock.com, Nam 2016.